Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 12, Episode 11. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com. Good to be back with you guys for this Wednesday regular edition of the show day, final day of Steelers 2021 training camp. Today, we will be back out there in a little bit. Probably going to be a rainy one, so we'll see exactly what happens at today's practice, but good to be back with you. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, yeah, take that uh, waterproof paper and pencil with <laughs> you to, uh, today. You know it, it. it sounds like you might need it, though. But, uh, and we're, an arc. And an arc. It, it's going to rain that much, huh? So, uh, like uh, anyway, final day. Uh, you know, you know, bit, kind of bittersweet, I guess, in, in, in your mind here? It is. Obviously, camp's one of my – it is my favorite time of year, honestly. Um, it's just the, the mark of a, of a new season. It's a lot of fun uh, getting to talk to people and just getting to be out there and, and be close to the team. So uh, it is going to be bittersweet, but we shall move on. Just glad to be back at camp this year. All right, Dave, let's start things off here. Um, let's start with the big news yesterday, the scary news that is thankfully a lot less scary sounding right now. Chase Claypool got hurt on the second to last play of practice yesterday. It was a deep ball from Haskins down the right sideline. He kind of went up for it and, and just landed awkwardly, I guess. I didn't get the, the best view of it, but I saw him come down and immediately started holding his ankle and um, was down for a few minutes. It looked like it could be really bad, but thankfully, um, from according to multiple reports uh, in the hours after the injury, says it's a minor ankle sprain, nothing serious. He should be fine. And so the Steelers definitely got a little lucky with one because I was getting pretty nervous that thing could be, you know, a multi-week at least injury. Yeah, especially the way uh, it looked like uh, Ben Roethlisberger and Eric Ebron had to help him off the, uh, the, the 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 field back to the locker room and all like that. It, it you know kind of compounded things there, and also not being there and not seeing it, <laughs> it leads leads your mind to racing, right? But uh, the good news is, uh, as you stated, I think there were like three reports within the first uh, I don't know hour or so after it happened, stating that it's not a serious injury. There, uh, even Claypool got on Twitter and said all is well so uh, good news there and the great uh, Dr. Melanie Friedlander wrote us up a post uh, based on kind of what's out there low low you know uh, uh, ankle sprain there so if anybody's in you know wants to uh, read that you surely should uh, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and uh, uh, bet you that uh, Chase Claypool does not play in Saturday's preseason game at Heinz Field against the Detroit Lions I think that's a pretty safe bet there but but as far as anything past that, I mean, we'll, we'll obviously see. You would think that he probably wouldn't play in the in the uh, preseason finale as well. But stranger things have indeed happened. So uh, the good news is, is it just doesn't sound like a super serious long term mm-hmm. injury here. Right. Sounds like he'll be good to go for week one against Buffalo has just under a month to get ready. So if it is a minor sprain, then then he should be fine. So. Yeah, that was scary, but uh, thankfully less scary right now. Rest of the injury report, um, team relatively healthy overall in terms of guys not working due to injury yesterday. Only two other players missed because of injury. That was Marcus Allen for the first day and Antoine Brooks Jr. He's been out for, I think, just I think days today's day 11, I believe, with Antoine Brooks Jr. So missing a lot of time there. That obviously, um, I think he's getting closer. He did some, some sprinting yesterday briefly, but I doubt he practices uh, today and Probably won't play Saturday, maybe, but but probably not. And so uh, that's the big injury to look at. But otherwise, you know, speaking, Steelers in pretty good shape health wise. And I'm guessing uh, Washington and McLeod and mm-hmm. Balage and Snell and all those guys that have uh, most recently missed some time back uh, back in the full lines again, right? Yep, those guys are all full. Kendrick Green is back after excuse absences. So yeah, teams in in decent shape. Boy, what a uh, what a uh, missed opportunity for a guy like Antoine Brooks Jr. Right? I mean, it's hard to mm-hmm. imagine at this time due to the due to the time he's missed, and boy, specifically if he misses a second preseason game uh, on, on on Saturday, you almost have to rule him out as the Week One uh, nickel at that point, right? 
Yeah, it'd be tough. Um, you know, he came into camp as the starter and certainly had an opportunity. I um, mean, we'll see, you know, when he gets back and, you know, maybe if he absolutely dominates the last preseason game, it could change things. But it's not looking too great for him right now in terms of being the starting slot corner. All right. So overall, and, uh, and we had a monumental moment take place that you got to witness uh, at, uh, at, at training camp practice on Tuesday, correct? I did. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. The whole uh, sure. first team uh, offensive line working oh. together, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was great to see the first team offensive line left to right, a core for Dotson, Green, Turner, and Banner take their, their first team reps of camp uh, of the entire season, basically. And so, yeah, it's good to see those guys back fully healthy working together and, uh, you know, couldn't come a mo- moment too soon. Uh, Mike Thomas not ready to anoint uh, uh, Kendrick Green the uh, the starting center, but but you'd be willing to for us, right? You're the next best thing, right? <laughs> I suppose. Well, maybe not that part, <laughs> but but yeah, I think so. Tomlin's doing this whole game of uh, you could suggest that, which I guess translates to yes. But I'm not going to say yes. <laughs> That's a new hot uh, uh, game show. You could suggest that. Huh? <laughs> uh, I like it. All right. Yeah. Look, I mean, uh, that's not a surprise to me. I don't think really a surprise to you. Uh, I think we stated right from from the get go here. This isn't a very high, high bar to clear. I think the biggest thing about uh, Kendrick Green is he's messed what three or four practices, excused ab- abs- absences there, and yeah, you'd kind of like him around uh, to uh, have 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 been able to learn in those instances. But uh, all 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 this said, it you know the signs still tend to point to him being the week one center and at this point yes. barring injury it would be amazing if he's not I think I agree uh, just a quick sidebar here because um, I know the Steelers reportedly had interest in him pre-draft you know, a lot of fans were hoping the team would take him Bears offensive tackle Tevin Jenkins is going to have back surgery and Matt Nagy says the goal is to get him back this season which is, you know, it means he could miss the entire season. So fans that wanted Jenkins, who was a really nasty, you know, offensive line from Oklahoma State, who I enjoyed watching, we enjoyed listening to, but uh, maybe in some way, good thing the Steelers didn't take him, considering this is a, apparently a serious back injury he's dealing with. Wow. Hope to have him back this season. Yikes. Yeah. All right, Dave, uh, let's see. Where do you want to go from here? The Steelers, right after yesterday's practice, most teams did their cuts from 90 to 85, you know, a day or two in advance. The Steelers did, did it about 10 minutes before they had to yesterday, uh, trimming the roster from 90 to 85, releasing the following five players. And they are defensive end, defensive lineman, Abdullah Anderson, cornerback Steven Denmark, wide receiver Isaiah McCoy, kicker Sam Sloman, and offensive guard Brandon Walton. Um, no major surprises here. Obviously, rarely does that happen on a cut from 90 to, to 85 or any sort of initial cut down. I would, I will say I'm surprised to see Anderson go over TJ Carter. I'm not really understanding of that decision and a little surprised to see Sloman go just for the fact that that means that Boswell is now the only kicker. And what do you do in the fourth preseason game against Carolina? Do you really have, or the fifth preseason game, I should say, do you have Boswell really kick in that finale or do something else? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, uh, look, and I, we, we said on the wrap-up podcast uh, last night there that you could uh, basically say that, you know, that you could have built a list of about 15 guys that uh, you could have made a strong argument uh, uh, for, for, for being on that that, that first cut list of five here. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly watching this Twitter feed add in more stuff about Devin Jenkins here. But mm. uh, uh, I the thing with Sloman, I guess you could point to with, with getting the kicker out of there is, is now you get Boswell all the work and especially, who knows? I mean, you might have a new holder, right? In, uh, in, 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 in Presley Harvin the third. So, and I know they get their time during practice and all like that, but, you know, maybe you want to see a guy like Presley Harvin do the holding with the, you know, quote unquote, live bullets falling or, 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 or coming after him there. So maybe that's one instance there. Uh, and it gives you, a, I mean, Sloman wasn't going to make this roster. So it gives you one extra a spot for one extra player, maybe to make a, make his mm-hmm. cause, you know, uh, uh, make the status case there, you know, in the last couple of games there. Uh, McCoy boy had a sinking feeling as, as, as camp went on there that he just was not living up to, uh, you know, kind of what we thought maybe he he could potentially be, and I think if you go back and look at the Eagles game, man, there especially one play down there near the goal line, he doesn't block anybody on 
a running play and there's a safety just begging to be dug out there. And if he, I'm not saying if that safety gets dug out that the uh, running back scores. I think it was Tony Brooks James on that, that, that carry. I'm not, I, I can't remember uh, there. But uh, really no effort to block anybody on that play. And I'm thinking, mm. and this is obviously an hour or two after he has been waived. I'm thinking to myself, well, little things like that will probably get you waived, you know. Sure. Uh, and, and, and he just, you know, he never really stuck out. You had the, uh, the the Cody Whites, the team, wait for Cody White to come back from the injury. You had the, the Rico uh, Bussy Fussy uh, that, 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 that happened there. I mean, several other guys, you know, making plays, but you really – uh, uh, rarely heard of Isaiah McCoy, only rookie of the bunch uh, to uh, to be let go. There uh, had a was given a nine thousand dollar signing bonus this year, so three thousand of it will uh, will count against the cap this year as dead money. The other uh, six thousand will count dead money 2022. I think you had even said, boy, Stefan Denmark's fading fast here. And uh, that that ended up uh, being the out for him, and I think he called uh, uh, Walton uh, too as, as as a guy that uh, end of the offensive line lines, if you will, uh, out out the door there. So once again, probably not overly shocking. When, uh, you know, you you could have probably built a name of fifteen names and and got the five out of that overall there. So that's where they stand right now. And I don't think uh, you know other than the dead money issue with McCoy, uh, any of these uh, cuts. Uh, I, I don't think impact the uh, the salary cap situation. Gotcha. Yeah, Denmark had a good start to camp, but not everyone who has a good start to camp has a good end to camp. Usually there's one or two guys every single year where some young guy steps up, has a really good start, especially team in shells early, things like that, and then kind of fades as things go along. Damon Patterson, the wide receiver, who drew a ton of buzz two or three years ago, um, was another case of that. Now, I don't, I didn't see anything in particular in Denmark's play that looked really poor, but he was fading fast, got passed up by Lafayette Pitts in practice and in uh, Eagles game. Denmark did not play a single defensive snap, so kind of told you that he was on his way out. Um, a guy with a lot of talent, I think physically gifted, height, weight, speed kind of guy, but just has never put it all together for one reason or another. Uh, yeah, and a couple of these guys, they already kind of knew pretty well uh, overall, right? Because Walton ended the uh, the season, well, Walton and Denmark, right? They both ended the season on the practice squad last year. Is that correct? I know Walton did. I'm not quite as sure on Denmark. I, maybe, but I, I'm not positive. Yeah, I, I get, well, Denmark has been part of the organization before, prior to this this training camp. Uh, okay. I, I I just can't remember if he was on the practice squad last year or or, 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 or you know to end last year or previously though. But uh, they had known a little bit about Denmark already, known a little bit about uh, 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 Walton already, and let's see who was it? Sloman. They didn't obviously know a lot about Anderson other than this. But I mean, Anderson's a guy that seemed to have the work ethic. They just he just probably just couldn't put it all together there. So uh, I think Anderson was a guy that I kind of wonder might if he could, you know, uh, survive and make the practice squad. But, uh, you know, getting cut this early now, especially with there being the open week uh, after the final cuts, I, I don't think any of this is minutia to try to get guys back to the practice squad. Uh, I, I have a feeling these guys are gone now. Yep, I am with you there, Dave. So next cuts will have to come on August 24th, so 60 days from now after the Lions game. We'll have to cut from 85 to 80, and then the final cuts, I believe, come a week after that, the 31st from 80 to your 53-man roster. All right, uh, so some guys got some chances to make some cases here. All right, Dave, some cap-related news. I know this is very much in your wheelhouse. Steelers, of course, had the Joe Schobert deal and also restructured the contract of Stephon Tuitt. And I think they did it in a way that maybe was surprising. But but you tell me about the Tuitt restructure and where this team sits at cap space. They have now $20 million in free space to hand out the free agents, correct? That's how <laughs> to, to, read the, uh, to read the Twitter machine and the quote-unquote insiders, uh, that, that – that's exactly the case. Actually, it's not. Uh, Stefan Tuit. Uh, look, we've been calling all off season uh, uh, that 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 a Tuit restructure uh, was likely to happen. That we thought was going to happen. That 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 really kind of needed to happen. Uh, well, it happened, and in doing so, they they reportedly cleared up six point. Three four million in salary cap space. Uh, the only difference there that they ended up doing was they said, "Look, we want to try to maximize 
uh, some of this uh, uh, restructure space here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of uh, 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 actually three uh, avoidable years on, on on top of it there. So 6.34 million uh, is the end result there of that. So that was a little bit surprising there. Now uh, people are wondering, well, well, what what does this mean to Stefan Tuitt's contract? Well, he was already under contract for 2021 and 2000. 2022. Uh, his cap number in 2022 only goes up 1.585 million dollars as a result of this uh, structure restructure here. Uh, it all becomes the voidable years start in 2023. Now. You could obviously get into a situation next off season. I mean, to it's still a young young guy overall, right? I mean, uh, if you got to a situation where you thought you might want to to uh, restructure him heading into uh, next off season, you could obviously do something and and unvoid those voidable years there. Now the proration amounts in 2023, 2024, and 2025 all stay in place there, but uh, I wouldn't get too caught up just yet about 2023 and beyond being voidable years because we obviously have two full seasons to go uh, before we get there. So really the only surprise there is uh, not that they restructured, is that they restructured adding three voidable years. They're just trying to maximize uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the cap space saved. And this, this gives, this uh, helps maybe provide a timeline to uh, people wondering, well, why did they wait so long? Well, they wanted to see how much cap space maybe they they, they needed. They probably didn't think they were going to be trading for Joe Schobert at this time of the offseason here, right? And, you know, they've, they've obviously had to make other uh, other moves along the way. way. So it's not I, – I, I think the idea of them waiting – I know there was that report that I've squashed numerous times – from uh, other Steelers blogs stating that they couldn't do it because they couldn't take his salary down to the minimum because of the new CBA and and and, and or be, yeah, because of the new 17-game uh, uh, schedule. Folks, if you're reading that stuff, it's garbage. All right, I'd already proved that wrong with uh, I'd asked Joe Cor Joe Corey about that. That's not the reason why they put off this. No, Stefan Tuitt did not give back a game. Game check as part of this restructure. Players are not in the business of restructuring contracts and giving back money there. So uh, it just irritates me that some of this stuff is pushed off in as fact when indeed it's not. And then you have even a radio station recap that false report and that's how that's why people stay so damn confused with this stuff alex is is mm -hmm. they don't get the good information out there uh now where where are the steeders right now I'm waiting to make sure that we have the correct numbers on the uh on the joe schobert uh contract but i i'll, I'll tell you this the nflpa uh just updated their numbers this morning and right now they show 92 players under contract there they have obviously not caught up to uh uh the uh the uh the five players being waived yesterday but being as uh, how those should not impact any of the cap numbers there and i assume this also this number includes because it's one less than yesterday in includes another injury settlement number uh, in there, 17.229362 under the cap. That's a lot of, that's a lot under the cap, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 for this time of year. So that instantly means that the Steelers are going to go out and trade for uh, who's the, uh, uh, Ste Gilmore. Oh, yeah. Stefan Gilmore. Right. Right. And uh, uh, also CJ Henderson, right. From, uh, from the yeah. Jaguars at the same time, Those at, guys. at the same time. And what, what else are they going to go get? Uh, Mitchell Schwartz and okay. Russell Kuhn and just, yeah, I mean, it's it's free money. All right. I mean, all right. So there we go. Super Bowl, right? Something like that. All right. So. Uh, now here, then, then I turned Madden off and then I came uh, back to my computer. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, he, here's the thing about that 17 million, folks. Uh you know, a good let's l l let's let's go through the list here. You know, the uh, the uh, practice squad is going to be at least 16 players uh, this year. Now we 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 do know that the minimum cost of that, even if you signed all minimum salary players. Now remember, you can sign up to what six is it six veterans? I think, uh, and yes. they they obviously come with a little bit higher minimum uh, 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 practice squad cost. But let's assume the Steelers did the minimum, which they won't. But if they did, uh, you're looking at almost three. 
three million dollars for a practice squad right there. You're looking at a 52nd and 53rd player at a minimum, costing you 1.3 million dollars. So we're already, I already, already, already drank part of your milkshake, Alex. Uh, 4.3 million dollars. And those are minimums, right? Those right. are just absolute minimums. Right, right. So that's that's the minimums right there. So that's 4.3 uh, 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 million right there. Uh, you, Currently, you have, uh, I think, a little over eight hundred thousand uh, in in uh, with two players on injury reserve that missed the uh, injury settlement time. So they're probably going to start on IR. Uh, uh, at, at least the start of the season. So you have to accommodate that number. It wouldn't be surprising to see at least two more players join those two players in the next few days. So let's say that's a... Uh, now let, let's take uh, another 1.2 million dollars of your money uh, right there. So what are we up to? Uh, three plus uh, 1.3 plus another 1.2. Do the math there. All right, 4.3 plus 1.2. Oh God, uh, 5.7. I think. All right, and you know, at a minimum, and this is way at a 5. minimum. 5.5. I'm done. Okay. 5.5 5. 5. 5. 5 million there. Okay. Now, uh, at a minimum, and we've been using around seven million dollars is what this, what we think this team will carry into the season and want to have for available cap space there. I'm looking back at my numbers the last couple of years, and and yes, I keep that stuff, Alex, because that's what nerds do. Uh. <laughs> You know, they've, they've entered the, uh, the you know, week one of the season, the last two seasons, with around 9.5 in available cap space, okay? Uh, you know, so may, maybe I've shot a little bit low there, but let, let, let me just guarantee you that they're going to have at least $7, seven million, uh of that. So, I mean, we're already around $13 million uh, spoken for, and we're at all minimums there. So... Uh, it, it, you know, anything more than that? Here's the other thing that we don't know yet as well, too. What's going to happen with the T.J. Watt contract? Mm -hmm. All right. right. Uh, uh, yes, there are ways for them to do the T.J. Watt extension and have his cap cap hit not move at all. I'm starting to wonder if that's going to be the case, though, and that they uh, uh, if it doesn't rise by about two or three million dollars uh, because of the kind of the cash flow that they're going to have to uh, uh, give to him. If indeed, you know. Let's say it's another two or three million dollars right there. Well, man, I, I I just ate up you know fifteen, sixteen million of your seventeen point uh, two two nine million in cat space that they have right now. So uh, uh, no Christmas cards for me. <laughs> I guess not. So the only uh, only other thing this team could do to create cap space, you know, realistically, is restructuring Boz, which would clear up. Just over a million, I believe. Yeah, but I mean, they could obviously do uh, do the do the voidables and get a little bit more there if they want. How much to. more could they get? I, I mean, it can't be that much more. No, nah, no, nah, it's not. It, no, nah, it's not that much more because if you look just overall, let me see here. His uh, he like from one to I don't know one and a half, two at most, probably close up with the voidable years. Yeah, I mean, I, I, on a regular restructure right now, if you just went just the, the, the regular year amount there, you're looking at 1.0475 is what you would save uh, there. And you're talking about taking a base salary of 3.085 uh, down – uh, and adding on another three, I mean, you're, yeah, yeah I mean, you're not going to save that much more. It's not going to be the, the astronomical amount that, that, that you saved like you did with two it there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, they could have, you know, depending on the wand contract, they could have a little bit of money to make a move to add a free safety to, you know, sign someone who gets cut, something like that. But it's not this giant pot of money that, that the way it looks on paper, because much of that money is still been spoken for. Yeah. And people just have it. They, they, they struggle with that though. You know, they, they, they right. see that money out there and they don't, they don't realize that the team needs X amount of dollars, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to, 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 to have, you know, for in season and, and that kind of stuff there. Right, no, exactly, and people just look at the overall number and just forget that you know there are a lot of of logistical things that have to be addressed, and the the walk contract is going to impact the cap or could impact the cap, and so um, you have to take that into consideration as well. So we'll keep you posted. You know, could they sign somebody? Sure, I think we've talked about extensively, Dave, that you know we don't believe Clover is done, and he's always kind of tweaking and building this roster. But will there be some you know big prize coming through this door? Almost certainly not. Right. I look at, at, at this point. I think I, I I would not be surprised if he added a, you know an, uh, 
another player or two, but I don't think those guys are going to have the kind of salaries that, that, that people think that they're going to have. I mean, I think you're looking at, at, at veteran minimum type salaries here uh, if indeed that kind of thing happens, you know? Right, gotcha. All right, Dave, any other information cap-wise we should know about? Um, the injury settlements that come in, it's like, what, 50000 a pop on these guys? Uh, yeah, roughly. It, it depends on the amount of weeks, you know, that they, that they, out, that, yeah. you know, that, that they settle for. Here's what the uh, cap number would be for Boswell. If you did, uh, added, added the voidable, the maximum amount of voidable years there, his new cap number would be 1.409. So that would mean that you freed up. Uh, a Extra grand total of 16, 1.676 versus the one point, you know, so about another $600,000 is all mm. you, for all you free up uh, by, by doing avoidable years with him. Gotcha. So, well, do you think they'll do it? I mean, not that it means a whole lot, I suppose, but do you think it'll happen? Uh, I think it could, uh, you know, once again, you know, we're, we're dealing with such an unknown variable here with with the watt thing i mean we've got an idea what we think they might do contract wise but uh i mean they've done a lot of things they haven't done in the past what will they do with with, with the guaranteed money and the cash flow here i mean the more the more i, I look at this thing the more i kind of wonder if watt's cap number might not increase by a couple of million you know okay uh because i mean just giving him 46 point oh eight nine in cash flow, you know, in first year cash flow might not be enough, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, are you going to have to put like another $2 million, uh, uh, let's say roster bonus on that, you know, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to suffice and that, that obviously would raise that cap number a couple more million dollars just in, in 2021 alone there. But, uh, uh, it's out there if they need it. I mean, they 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 might be keeping Boswell's restructure in the bag right now, just to you know, like they did with Tuits. You know, how much right. are, how much of this are we going to need? Now, uh, look, even if you did, it would not hurt regardless. Because I, I is Boswell going to play five more years? Uh, he might. I don't think so. Boswell? Yeah, he wouldn't play five more years. Yeah, Why I not? Kickers I, play till they're. 40. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think two maximum here for him. Uh, there's, really? So okay. I I don't think I mean. In other words, what I'm saying is it it really doesn't matter. I guess uh, what 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 you do with his contract there and and, and adding the voidable years and whatnot because he'll be you know probably going to be gone anyway uh, uh, by the time he reaches the first voidable year there. But uh, anyway, we'll we'll see uh, how that minutia works out there. But once again, you know the 17 million that the Steelers are under right now. A lot of that's going to start getting eat, eaten up here, or a lot of it's already spoken for already with things that are coming and the big variable once again. And look, I mean, what's going to happen with Joe Hayden? I mean, we 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 we've worked out a plausible situation where you know it could happen, you yeah. know. Yeah, it could. I I don't think it will, but at least not now. But right. it could. Sure. But uh, the, the important takeaway here, Dave, is that you can't just look at the overall cap space and assume that's the number they have to play with. And that's why you do a good job not only talking about it and tweeting about it, but but I, I love the the tables that you put together that really clearly speak out and break down line by line like like an accountant that would go crazy for that, <laughs> um, you know, about how much money they have, what everything's earmarked for, how much effective usable cap space they have. And so those are really valuable for me because I'm dumb. I don't know this stuff that well. And so it kind of puts that in, in good context for me and um, I'm sure it does for other people as well. Yeah, look, I mean, you just have to you you do this enough times, you know what's out there, and you know what 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 to expect to be, you know, what the expected expenditures are. Now, I, you know, you can bet for sure. Uh, and here here's the bad thing about it, uh, uh, you know, the the NFLPA usually lags behind x amount of days and no lag behind uh, uh, uh add on to those x amount of days after the start of the you know after the final cuts are made because they're made they're, they're entering this stuff in there and it doesn't you know it takes a little bit longer around the league when you have a league cutting down from 85 to to 53 players so it usually takes even longer so you usually don't get the official kind of cut down number from the nfl pa until like i don't know like the 20th or the 25th of september which wow. is ob obviously Way after now, I keep my spreadsheets up daily, so I'll have a good idea. But uh, I think the biggest uh, my 
uh, outside of the Watt structure, you know, uh, structure of his contract right now. Uh, my biggest question is exactly how much after after the week one roster is set. Uh, what is the amount that they're carrying into week one as, as far as extra in-season space? And I'm willing to bet you that number winds up being more than $7 million. Yeah, I think it'll be. I think seven's the floor. And right. anything from there is, is probably you know reasonable to expect. Yeah. Um, Dave Bryan, a new NFL PA leader. Don't worry about better pay and revenue sharing and camp practices. It's all about updating the union website for <laughs> salary cap reasons. Those are our demands, Roger Goodell. Uh, you know, just, it, it might be sad, but I keep a spreadsheet with this stuff every day, you know, uh, daily, no, da- daily entries of, of what the cat, what the NFL PA, uh, number moves as, because obviously there's not an official site. You just have to go with the public report, uh, how the public report moves. And all you really get with the public report is they lost this amount of cap space today. Mm-hmm. And this is how many uh, guys they have under contract. That's that's really what you're working off of. So you have to have a good understanding of contract structure and roster displacement to to uh, uh, to, to 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 pick through the clues right there. But I I found that I find that kind of challenging, and I guess that's one of the I've always been attracted to numbers and stats and all. And anyway, people are tired of hearing about that. So let's listen, move on. you don't talk about that being said when I'm the man who's. Too- did a hang times for punting machines. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can top that. So I promise you, you, you sound like the Fonz compared to me. Hey, hey. cool it. All right. Sit uh, on I it. Only know, I only know the Fonz. I don't know any other references. All so right. All right. Stop hurting me. All right, Dave. I know you have not done your roster prediction officially on Steelers Depot, but I'm sure it's coming soon. And we can go through my roster prediction that got posted yesterday on Steelers Depot on Tuesday and kind of compare and contrast. I don't have major changes from from the hall of fame game one to this one they kind of settle in as as the season uh, preseason kind of marches along but we'll go through it here and see what your thoughts are and what differences you would have we'll start with the quarterbacks here keeping three of them ben rudolph and haskins i assume those are your three and likely in that order as well yeah absolutely uh, nothing still nothing has uh, has changed as far as that or the order as far as i'm concerned i think it's roethlisberger rudolph and haskins there and obviously dobbs the uh still the odd man out there mm-hmm. at running back keeping four with Najee harris anthony mcfarland benny snell and kalen balage good to see snell and balage back healthy snell is that roster spot a little less secure. I'm kind of thinking about it. Yeah. I, I, if there's any place to maybe cut to find you an extra spot for something else or position group wise, that, that could potentially be it. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, and it's going to be interesting. Is it, is it two dogs, one bone, maybe with Snell and Blodge? I, it, it's, it's definitely possible there, but, uh, 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 Benny Stell does give you special teams value, as does Kalen Balaj, right? And right, now, right. but they are kind of redundant kind of backs on top of it there, I think. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, I, I just can't get over Mike Tomlin yelling, "That's Benny Snell football," you know. <laughs> so uh, until I can get that uh, out of my head, there, I'm with you. I'm keeping, I'm keeping those four, and I'm keeping uh, uh, Derek Watt. I don't know. Fast Petey made the cut there. I don't know if he's going to be obviously on the. Uh, uh, I don't think he's going to make the 53. But does uh, does 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 Fast Fast Petey become a a practice squad candidate now? Maybe I'm. I was surprised to see them keep eight running backs. That seemed one one spot too heavy. You think all those guys getting back? You know, Brooks James and Guerrero got signed because of the injuries to Snell, Balage, and you think with those guys getting healthy, they'd make the move. But but I think Guerrero and Brooks James have both flashed a little bit, both in in camp and and during the preseason action against the Eagles. All right, uh, so we're the same there, and I and I, I assume uh, Derek Watts being kept as well too. I'm going yes, out sir. on him there. <laughs> Big limb. Wide receivers still with the five, Juju, James Washington, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, and Ray Ray McLeod. Is that your five, and would you consider a six? And if so, who could be that number six? Yeah, you know, the only question I have here is, man, is Ray Ray McLeod that safe? And I guess from a return aspect, he is. To me, Ray Ray McLeod doesn't really give you much of anything outside of, 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 of the return ability. Now, it does give you that backup slot, you know, uh, uh, kind of player there. But uh, the this would still be my five right now. And no, I would not add to it just yet. If I did add to it, I would imagine it would be a guy like Anthony Johnson. And it might yeah. 
might come maybe at at an expense of either a Snell or Blodge because mm-hmm. you know it w- w- would would give you a special teams helmet there uh, on top of it. But I'm locked st- step uh, with you right now with those same five. We'll see if the, my my opinion changes these next couple of weeks. Yeah, McLeod isn't going to have a ton of offensive value, but he doesn't need to. There's so many good weapons ahead of him. He just needs to have good special teams value and some versatility, and I think he does all those things just just fine. At tight end, again, no changes here. Eric Ebron, Pat Frymuth, and Kevin Rader still have Rader as the number three over Zach Gentry. I think Gentry's made progress this mm-hmm. uh, this training camp and preseason from what I've seen on tape, but it's it's just it, it's not enough yet in my eyes. Kevin Radar, uh, better better blocker, better special teams player, and that that that's been my three all along here. I'll be shocked if it's not. I'm with you. Offense line, I do have some changes here. The tackles, though, are still the same. A core for Banner, Haig, and Moore. We did kind of talk about, you know, who could get the hat on game day. Would it be Joe Haig or Dan Moore? That's, I think, a more interesting discussion than where we were just a couple of weeks ago. Do have a change along the interior, adding a 10th offensive lineman. I'm keeping Trey Turner, Kevin Dodson, Kendra Green, J.C. Hossenauer, Rashad Coward, and B.J. Finney. So I'm just hedging my bets here and keeping all of the offensive linemen. Yeah, uh, I I can't go that far yet. I still think it it's something that maybe comes down to a Rashad Coward or a B.J. Finney, uh, personally. So uh, I, I'm I'm kind of conflicted uh, overall which way to go here. Cow- I mean, what has Coward really shown, Alex? I mean, I understand he shows up, he's a professional and all like that, right. but I mean. If push comes to shove, putting someone in the game, who would you rather have in the game, Finney or Coward? Yeah, I was thinking about that last night watching some more of the Eagles game. Uh, it'd be Finney. Coward's not ready. I think Coward has some potential, some developmental type stuff in terms of the traits, and that's why you w- would want to hold on to him. But this guy's not ready to play in a game. And so I think he actually – I didn't even have this on my roster prediction, but I might have Coward as a uh, week one inactive just because he's not ready to play – on Sundays right now. Right. And that's what's kind of leading me to lean back towards, you know, Finney at least has, has the position flexibility too, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, barring somebody being brought in from the outside, which I still think is a case. Uh, me too. I, 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 I really think there might be a center slash guard out there. Uh, this team thinks might get cut. And who knows? Maybe that maybe that wipes two of these guys out, or at or at mm-hmm. minimum, uh, uh, you know, puts ha- Hassenhauer as a game day inactive, right? You know, uh, that 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 kind of thing there. So I tell you what, to to, to be different here, I, I I will stay with the four tackles that you have: a core four Banner, Haig, and, and and Dan Moore Jr. Uh, I will go Trey Turner, Kevin Dotson, Hassenhauer. Green and Finney. I'm cutting. I'm, mm. I'm cutting Rashad Coward. Put him on the practice squad. There's just okay. just been nothing there for me, at least in tape. You know. Uh, and God bless you, son. The gift that you gave me yesterday. <laughs> you are very welcome for that. Enjoy yourself. Uh, oh Lord, I you think we're allowed that's... to say it. I think we're allowed okay. to acknowledge that there's there's preseason all 22 that we've gotten. Or we can't say anything more than that. But the clips you're seeing are our preseason all 22, which yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh Lord, it just that's like I mean it's like Christmas, man. It really is to get that and after not having it for a couple of weeks there and throwing it up on a big screen TV is just I don't know, it brings tears to my eyes. Somebody it's not cut. even like Christmas. It feels like a, a mythical creature <laughs> in like lore that you never thought you'd actually exist, like a dragon that just comes out of the sky. All right, somebody's cutting on the onions in my house <laughs> here. Let's move on to the, the defensive side of So you have twenty six <laughs> offensive players, I have twenty five. Yeah, uh, I went with a test offensive lineman, so that gives me 26, which means 24 on the defense here, starting with a defensive line. Same six as before, Hayward, Tewitt, Warmly, Loudermilk, Alu Alu, and Carlos Davis still ahead of uh, Isaiah Bugs. Still close. I think Bugs, I think both guys have had good camps, but I'm just going Davis here. I think he's more athletic, uh, better pass rusher, according to Mike Tomlin, and offers some now interesting special teams value with some of the kick stuff and, and punt. Uh, block stuff he's been doing lately. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I, and I think this is the same six I've had here for, for a while there. Loudermilk showed me a little bit more on that tape. Uh, this, this, this last game worth, uh, worth, you know, he, he would, he would obviously be the guy that doesn't dress if everybody's healthy, but, uh, I like it. I think warmly 
uh, has had a good first couple of uh, preseason games. I don't see any reason to make a change there, especially to keep, uh, you know, maybe a Bugs over a Wormley. I don't see that happen. I have Bugs going to the uh, practice squad. So uh, same six for me there. Would allow him to be a week one inactive for you, though? Yes. Assuming... yes. Okay, me too. Yeah, I don't think he's quite ready yet, but I think he's done well. He has separated himself from some other guys on this team. At outside linebacker, same four as before. I mean, it's probably the, the one where I get the most blowback for not keeping a Quincy Roche or Jameer Jones, but the four I am currently keeping are TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, Melvin Ingram, and Cassius Marsh. I think the big, and look, yeah, you can make a strong argument for Cassius Marsh not being the, the not being on that list. People, I think, get caught up in why do you guys value specialty? I'm tired, you know, uh, I think on the YouTube channel, you know, I'm sick and tired of you guys pushing special teams and all like that. Look, when we do these, we do these the way we think the team is going to do these. We don't do these with our, because none of you listening to this give one rats, you know what, about what we think the 53-man roster uh, should be because it doesn't matter what we think. Uh, what we try to do with these and, and, and mock drafts and all like that, once again, is we try to predict what the team will do. All right. Now, within that, we think the team is going to value a guy like Cassius Marsh and his special teams play over a guy like maybe Quincy Roche or, 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 or Jameer Jones. Now, within that, both those guys have been on special teams and are trying to make a case. So is it, it is plausible that mm-hmm. Cassius Marsh does not make this 53 in lieu of a Roche or Jameer Jones. We are open to that. But I think what you're seeing is Alex and I kind of just going off history and, 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 and the value of special teams and Cassius Marsh has value on special teams. That's why we lean that way. And that's why I think my next one will also still have Cassius Marsh on there. So if we get Cassius Marsh wrong, uh, just understand that we both agree that it is plausible that he does not make this 53 man roster. Correct. Right. But that special teams value is even, I think all the more heightened knowing that Melvin Ingram is not going to give you really anything there. And so you need to have someone on the outside there that can, that can hold that role. And I think the only way that they keep Roche or at least cut Marsh um, and to keep Roche is if they really feel like Roche is going to get claimed off of waivers. If he is just an absolutely awesome rest of the preseason and he's had a good preseason so far, but it's not to the point where I'm fearing that he's going to be claimed off of waivers. Listen, this is a guy that thought was going to be an early day three pick who fell to the sixth round. So cl- clearly the NFL not as high on Quincy Roche as we thought in the pre-draft process. And I think he's just an awkward scheme fit, not going to fit in a 4-3 system. And so that leaves you with just three, four teams to claim him. Um, and so unless he just absolutely dominates the next two games, he's had a good start. He's had what, a sack and a half, so he has done well, but not to the point where I'm thinking, oh, man, we're going to lose this guy if we uh, if we cut him. He better get after that, that Tuzar Skipper record. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, Skipper yeah. had like five sacks. I mean, right. That's the level Roche would have to be at, I think, to to really be in danger. Right. I mean, we go through this every year. You can't cut him because he won't clear. Look, I, I got to be honest with you. I think Jameer Jones is more ready to play an NFL snap than Quincy Roche. Now, that does not mean I don't like Quincy Roche's upside, but I think if you're looking for a guy uh, that, that you would – you would think that could get on the field and give you the better quality play in play out snap wise. I think that player is Jameer Jones. Yeah. I mean, he's got, I guess an extra year in the league. So that probably helps him a little bit. Roche has got to get bigger and stronger and, and those kinds of things. I mean, obviously neither guy's really ready to play right. defensive snaps and God help us if they do. But um, yeah, I, I get your point there. But, and I'm sure I, I, uh, I think Quincy Roche was a heck of a heck, heck of a uh, pick for the Steelers to get him where they got him. But uh, at the same time, he's going to have to blow it up on special teams. I think in these next two, 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 two games to stick. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. But, uh, right now I'm, I'm with you on those, uh, four outside linebackers. Inside linebacker going five here, of course, adding Joe Schobert after the Jacksonville deal. So keeping Bush, Schobert, Spillane, Johnson, and Marcus Allen, UG3, getting the heave ho here, which I think I would have done regardless, even if the Schobert deal never happened, because he's just been, to me, unfortunately, one of the biggest disappointments of camp so far. Yeah, and plus, you know, you kind of wonder if he's a ticking 
you know, that back sticking on him too, you know, uh, just what a, what a disappointment, right? A guy that we talked about, you know, uh, uh, say, man, if this guy can stay healthy, you know, there, there might be something there. Well, he, he stayed healthy. Now the, mm-hmm. now the, now the tape's what's got him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've been, his coverage overall has just been, just has been unimpressive. I had the article on it the other day. So unfortunate there. At corner, he, he does. The, he does seem to be in the driver's seat alone. With maybe a guy like Bundage to be on the practice squad still, though, right? I mean, T. Gray, Gray Scales is out of the picture now. I mean, there's not. There's not much. I mean, you're probably going to keep at least one inside linebacker on your mm-hmm. on, on on your practice squad. I kept Bundage. I didn't keep UG three because you know year three he's going in the in the wrong direction. I think you're he throwing just your boy me. out. You just completely tossing your boy out with the bathwater altogether now, aren't you? It's the harsh reality of the NFL, UG3. Sorry to turn, turn my back on you. All right. But what are you going to do? At corner, just five here, so I do have one cut. I cut Shakur Brown. I'm keeping Joe Hayden, Cam Sutton, James Pierre, Arthur Millette, and Antoine Brooks Jr. Haven't forgotten about Justin Lane, but I just haven't seen enough to really justify the spot. Is it possible? Yes, it is. But uh, those are the five I'm currently rolling with. And just to circle back here, this is where you made your cut to keep uh, the extra offensive lineman, correct? Right. Yeah, I chose Finney over Shakur Brown, basically. Uh, you know what? I boy Lane, uh, I I just I I, I kind of wonder here because you got a couple of slot guys in both Brooks. I mean, in in both Brooks and, and Arthur Millette There, you got a guy that Cam Sutton can give you some slot. They 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 need another outside guy, and you know. Bless Lane. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for every reason in the world to cut Justin Lane. I really am. But that guy can get downfield. I think he might be a Danny Lane, a, a Danny Smith, a Danny Lane, a Danny Smith, mm-hmm. uh, 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 maybe a pound the table guy for, you know, you think, you think it's been that good. I I mean, he always shows up getting down him and him and Pierre can get downfield, man. Uh, yeah. Would, would it, Lane even be active though? I mean, you have to construct your active list. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you, you could make an argument that Brooks jr. Right now is headed for an active yeah. week one, you know, that's true. Or even Millette. I mean, right. Wouldn't kill me. Or, I mean, Millette's not even a, a roster lock. Like if he got cut, it wouldn't, wouldn't floor me. It might be a little surprised, but it wouldn't, you know, surprise me that much. How about I piss off the masses here and just keep my same six here still, and that means keeping Justin Lane for one more week. That that that'll give us two, at least two differences right there. I think. Okay, so my your your six are my five plus Justin Lane. Correct. Aiden Sutton, Pierre Millette, Brooks Jr., and, and Justin Lane. And okay, I'm keeping it. the same four safeties. However, I still have that circled as. Uh, they could use a free safety type that can play special teams. I will not be shocked if, if, uh, and I, I think Trey Wharton Norwood's one of those guys that easily passes waivers and lands back on the, uh, back on the practice squad there. Mm-hmm. So I'm not giving up hope on a center or a safety still, Alex. Yeah. I think a free safety is a really good possibility here. Yeah. Norwood could be a guy that gets kept on that initial wave and then gets cut after the Steelers sign a free safety through through cut downs. And then he goes to, to, to just like Tuzar Skipper, who got kept initially, then got waived right, uh, right after that. So that, that could be the scenario there. But I do have Norwood. So my four safeties are Minka, Edmonds, Killebrew, and Trey Norwood, but certainly open to adding another guy here. Here's the thing on top of it, too, that hopefully we don't have the bridge that we don't have to cross because of the, uh, you know, the old IR rules and all like that. If somebody was to get injured that you want on your, you know, that uh, that you're wanting to be able to return from IR, you know, you got to have them on that initial cut down uh, on your initial 53 before moving them to IR. Sure. So who is the who is the quasi 53rd? You know, you see what I'm saying? Who is the mm-hmm. who is the extra player? You know, uh, right. should you get into a situation like that? Hopefully, knock on wood, we're not. But it just seems like every year they have to hold on to one guy before getting them to IR, that, that, that kind of thing there. Sure. Yeah. A lot of, a uh, lot of logistics involved here. Specialists, uh, chalk again, Boswell, Harvin and candidate. I don't want to call Harvin a lock. I think, uh, Barry's had a really strong camp. Danny Smith echoed those thoughts yesterday. I think Harvin struggled yesterday to be honest with you, but still have Harvin over Jordan Barry. Overall, Harvin has done well. He's a draft pick who's done well. Odds are that guy's going to get the job. But there's gonna be a lot of angry folks listening to this show if if Harvin's <laughs> not the choice, right? Uh, that that's my three. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. Game day inactives, by the way. Haskins, Haig, 
Finney, Loudermilk, and Norwood. That's my projected five keeping. And you can do the uh, only five inactives because I have nine or I have eight offensive linemen active on game day. And a practice squad pretty similar. I'll just roll through it here quickly. Trey Edmonds, Anthony Johnson, Matthew Sexton, Zach Gentry, Chaz Green, John LeGlue, Isaiah Bucks, Henry Mondo, Jameer Jones, Quincy Roche, Calvin Bundage, Shakur Brown, Lafayette Pitts, Mark Gilbert, Lamont Wade, and Donovan Steiner. Again, 16-man practice squads this season. Yeah, I think you're going to hit a lot of those. Uh, I, I'm not a I hope so. uh, Trey Edmonds. I mean, I, I get it with Edmonds because he can, you know, p- play, play basically be your backup fullback, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ooh, and he does offer a little bit of special teams value there. I don't know if I could pull. We'll see what mine looks like there. I understand Gentry. Chaz Green hasn't. Uh, What's 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 the correct word in the tape so far with Chaz Green? He hasn't been awful. <laughs> yeah, hasn't gotten his quarterback killed, I suppose. Just uh, the bad guy who's played both tackle spots. Uh, Bugs and Mundo make sense. Jameer Jones, Roche makes sense. Calvin Bundage makes sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I think you're going to hit a lot of those on there. Is there anyone off the top of your head that you would put on this practice squad that I do not have included on here? Oh, I'm trying Any to name? run run through my head real quick here. Uh, Any offensive lineman uh, or well, you kept you kept Coward, didn't you? So Coward would yeah, probably, you would have Coward on there. Yeah, okay. I, I would probably have Coward on there if he doesn't make the uh, uh, the fifty three. Uh, Mark Gilbert, I don't know. I mean, I, I I I hey, what what are your thoughts been on Mark Gilbert? It's been it was a a decent start. Been a little quieter since. Um, I think there's some work to do with him. Maybe fill out his body. His lower half is really thin. Um, but it's just a long corner with some ball skills. I think it's always worth hanging on to for a little bit. I'm trying to pull up the uh, the rest of the schedule here to see if there's anybody else that might kind of make. Yeah, I mean, this it's 16 man practice squad. It's a pretty exhaustive list. I mean, the other guys that aren't on here are guys that you kind of think are. are going to be cut here pretty quick right yeah i mean a guy like jamar watson i'm kind of su- surprised he's lasted uh i don't know I, i'd like to see uh, uh fast pd kind of make it but i mean yeah, what about rico bussy i don't have rico bussy yeah uh, or cody white cody white's another yeah. one right so that might be one where you maybe sub out i think johnson's gonna make it you could sub out sexton for rico bussy though and i might do that my next my next version right right i mean what what unless sexton takes one to the house i i don't know i mean i i do like sexton i just they haven't thrown to him enough i don't think down the field uh uh, uh for, for for my liking there but uh, overall i like it i think we, we we differ still on a couple of them but i i think it's i don't think uh either one of us would be surprised if it went the other person's way with with a couple of those guys there right so the well the differences here between mine and yours is I kept Coward, you didn't, you kept Lane, I did. Is that the only difference? Is Coward versus Lane? I believe so, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So pretty close there. So there you go. All right, Dave. Um, anything else you want to talk about today, or do you want to get to some reader emails and close out today's show? Uh, what about I? I think some of the, uh, I, you know, obviously all the coaches talked yesterday. Anything stick out about Danny Smith first and foremost about him talking about the onside kick and all like that, and and, and yeah, you already covered the punter battle and all like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, he just said that that Barry's been punting better now than he ever has before, and so that's at least notable to to discuss. They talked about that he hopes to work on some of the onside kick stuff and the rule changes there, but uh, just haven't had the opportunity to do so. To, to do so, They have not done it in, in practice yet, at least from what I've been, I've been able to watch, and so we'll see if they do it today, but the rain might get in the way of that. Other than that, probably not um, a whole lot from Danny Smith. Uh, anything from Matt Canada? I'm trying to think. I have to kind of go through this. We just get hit with this wave of information. I'm trying to to, to, to catch up with it all. Um you tell me. You uh, I, there, there, was not, there was nothing really hugely there, although you get the sense that the quarterback rotation is set, I think. Yeah, he said that well, it's settled, but that could change, you know, tomorrow. And that's right. just kind of the code speak way of you never know what's going to happen next, I suppose. Right. Uh, I don't think he revealed too much overall. Now, the SS Keith Butler uh, – that that's a little bit different story there. They they tried to they they went at him three different ways there to try to get him to uh, to reveal the nickel. Uh, and I think maybe he sprung a leak on the third attempt there. Uh, they said <laughs> uh, has uh, he, here's what, for for those that missed the wrap up pr- press conference. They uh, they first went at him. They said uh, is Arthur Millette locking down that nickel? He says I don't know if you could say anybody's locking that thing down. I'm not ready to say it yet. We'll see as we go along. It's an important position for us. He's gotten better. 
I know that. He's gotten better. But there's still a competition there. We haven't made up our minds in terms of who's going to start there and stuff like that. It's an important position for us, no doubt. Uh, we've got to figure out who our best DBs are and try to put them on the field if we can. Uh, and then a little bit later on, he goes, is the nickel between Antoine Brooks Jr. or Arthur Millette? Do we know that much? And Keith Butler, uh, I, Iron uh, 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 sewed up mouth Keith Butler goes, I don't know yet. I can't tell you that. Well, 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 they, they tried one more angle. Uh, he and it, well, actually, there was a third angle. They said, "Would somebody else be involved?" And and keep Butler keeping keeping state secrets. We'll see. And then it happened, Alex. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you say? Tell the message. Uh, has James Pierre done well enough on the outside that moving Cameron Sutton to that spot would be a possibility? Keith Butler says, we'll see. That's another possibility. That's a great question, and that might be the deal with us. We like 25, which is Antron Brooks Jr., and 35, which is uh, Arthur Millette, in terms of their physicality and stuff like that. We like the covering ability of 20, which is obviously Cameron Sutton. 42, which is James Pierre, has played well for us. I wonder if he calls him that in meetings, or he calls him by the name, <laughs> or if he just goes, hey, 42. Uh -huh. uh, James Pierre has played well for us in this part of our season could he be part of the starting deal we'll see we'll see as we go but that certainly is a possibility what do you take about all that my take is my projected nickel package is going to be cam sutton in the slot and james pierre right corner is that perfect no but is it your best five yes and i think that's the approach to take here is play your best five guys in nickel which is your predominant defensive package and so i think barring anything unforeseen any big play from Millette and Brooks Jr. who needs to get healthy of course those are going to be your guys I agree and I think that's kind of been my thought of maybe how this thing might go right out of shoot so we'll see there what are you doing in nickel uh, versus dime does it matter does it depend more on personnel across you across from you or are you not so afraid to send two <clears throat> linebackers out now if another team puts out say four wides yeah, it's a good question. Is there a possibility this team doesn't really play a lot of dime this year and just keep Schobert and, and Devin Bush on the field? Maybe. I still suspect they're going to play some level of dime on you know third and seven plus. You're going to just put your athletes, put your cover guys out there. Um, Who's coming that, off? Yeah, well, uh, Butler was asked that and, and, and was asked, you know, will Bush play in dime? And Butler just said, you know, we'll see how he progresses. And so I kind of left it very much up in the air. Um, and I don't know which way that one's going to go with show show we're in the green dot and talking about playing, you know, or learning dimebacker. You kind of feel like he's going to be the guy, but we'll see. But in terms of who that 60 B will be, I'm leaning it just depends on Brooks. If he gets back healthy in time, um, if he can't get back healthy, then it'll probably be Millette. If he can get back for at least the preseason finale and play reasonably well, then I think it'll be Antoine Brooks jr. All this and, and, and props to them to ask him kind of the right questions yesterday mm -hmm. when it comes to De Devin Bush and, and, and all that yesterday. Uh, do you buy that they just want Devin to concentrate more on getting healthy or in other words, and we talked about this the other day. I mean, is there a fire where there's smoke where the smoke is? I don't really believe the line about like having him focus on getting healthy. He is basically healthy. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be playing and practicing and running around at full speed the way that he is. So, and this idea of, you know, give him several hundred snaps, but we just won't play him in third and 12. I mean, so we'll let him run in there against a run and, and, and get, you know, his legs taken out by a guard, but we won't let him drop back into a zone hook zone. I mean, it just right. does not make a lot of sense. So I know that's the, the, the excuse or the, the rationale they're kind of hinting at here. I really have a hard time buying it. If I would have told you at the start of training camp or even before then, uh, let's go back to before mandatory mini camp. If I would have told you Devin Bush progresses, Devin Bush uh, 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 plays in the second preseason game, no setbacks whatsoever. But, oh, yeah, this team went out and added Joe Schobert to uh, to, to, to wear the green dot. Uh you would have you would have had you would have had me in the in the white jacket, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would have been calling the nine one one immediately. Yeah, uh, that that would have been a very surprising statement. I mean, so within that, I mean, there to me and 
I don't know, maybe a year from now, you know, people say we'll see how Dave over overreacted there and read way too much into stuff there. Uh, I, I And I said this the other day, I, I don't think they're happy with, the way things have transpired with Devin Bush, not only with I I I I think they might kind of worry about his his uh, his 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 football acumen maybe to some degree, his ability to process, uh, his coverage ability, and his attitude. I I think there's a lot of little things in there that's got this team kind of kind of wondering about him. Yeah, it's hard to read. I mean, I do want to give him credit for the way he attacked his rehab because he, man, he did such a good job with that. He was ready for the start of camp, and that's a hard thing to do, first major injury, and, and that means you're doing the right things. You're doing the little things. You're working hard. So I think we kind of lose sight of that, just just taking for granted the fact that he's been available for this whole summer, basically. I think it's really, really impressive, and I think it actually speaks to the level of maturity and love of the game and, and, and important things like that. But, yeah, it is. it does feel a little weird overall. Uh, let's see, this is his third season, right? So that means next off season is the off season that they have to decide his fifth year option, right? I believe so. Yes. Uh, where are you at? Don't ask. Don't, don't, ask. <laughs> I, I don't, I you don't, you don't, you don't want to go there, do you? I, I don't. I'll let you see how this is going to be if it, was, if it was slam dunk, though, you would have probably no no problem going there. I mean, if this was yeah, Mika, if this, a, if this was Mika Fitzpatrick or TJ White, you say, you idiot. You stuttering idiot. <laughs> Shut up. It, no, why even ask that wow, question? I got, but, I got really mean here in this hypothetical. Uh, yeah, uh, you've, been, you've been blasting some players, too. Boy, you you are on the uh, Kendrick Green uh, hate uh, uh, hate cycle. And, uh, boy, you're propping up uh, 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 guys like uh, Chukwama Corfor lately and giving him all the praise and all I got. By the way, you, you, you are right there. He had a better game than uh, in the All-22 tells the story i think with, with a core for i mean I, he's not going to go to a pro bowl based on that but it's mm. a lot better than what what the narrative is out there you see where i'm, I'm going though with bush though i think there's sure. just no, uh yeah. there is uh, just a lot of things floating around and who knows you know maybe we'll get a year from now and think oh man why well, how crazy for you to think that they wouldn't pick up his fifth year option but i think it, i think that needs to be in the back of people's heads at least Sure. No, I get that. And and your band opened for Kendrick Green Hate Cycle back in 88, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave. You want to get us some reader emails here and close out today's show? Sure, 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 sure. Let's uh, – David Ricard's right in. Dave, uh, where are we actually sitting for cap space right now? David, uh, do you not read the uh, uh, SteelersDepot.com? Because I put in a, a big recap on there just after the uh, the uh, Schobert and, and, and Stefan Tuitt restructuring. And, and and for for all practical purposes, we just recapped all that uh, in, earlier in the show. There, he wants to know where they sit sitting at cap space now. I know the, we signed a draft cap class, but uh, has that been reflected in the cap number? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, have, I, I've seen almost twenty million dollars. If anybody's reporting almost twenty million dollars being reported in Steelers cap space, you need to stop uh, uh, reading that particular spot or, or, or site. He says, I know Colbert likes rainy day fund for IR or Joe Hayden. I know you ran this down before, but what are your estimates? Uh, the cap hit for TJ's deal in 2021 is look, here's the thing about TJ. Watt. I mean, it's either going to be his cap, Numbers either not going to move at 10.089 or it's going to probably be about two or three million dollars uh, more. So that that's kind of the thing that you know, we're at the mercy to see what, which, which, which way the Steelers is going to go there. Uh, David, we just re if, if, if you missed it, go back at the, uh, you know, middle of the show there. We kind of recap where the Steelers are salary cap wise and how much of that's actually, you know, at, at their expense to kind of work with here. Uh, Michael Smith writes in offensive line salary cap. Hi, guys. Can you compare the salary cap cost of last year's projected starting offensive line versus this year's projected starters? I'm assuming there is a significant drop. If this year's group at least matches the performance of last year's group, do you think that means that we could have held or that we held on to some guys too long or that the coaching changes had significant effect? Keep up the good work, Michael Smith. Michael, I, trying to look at that in a vacuum the way you have it laid out is extremely difficult tough to do because back then you did not know that you're going to draft Kendrick Green or uh, Dan Moore Jr. for starters. Mm -hmm. uh, you did not know whether or not you're going to have a Joe Haig 
at, at, at that point. Uh, also, looking at a player just based entirely off their cap number is not the best way to do it because what if that what if that what if a player last year had his contract restructured to lower his cap number his cap number is not what his value is his value is what his average yearly earning is plain and simple so right. looking at it trying to measure a player against another player because of his cap number is the wrong way to go about doing it in my eyes, and also trying to look at base base the team's offensive line unit last year based off of what they have now, especially when you have a rookie in there and, uh, geez, what, what else? Uh, you got to, I mean, who, who saw the whole Trey Turner thing coming, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a new OC, a new head offensive line coach. It's just, it's new everything. It's, it's, it's almost apples and, apples and oranges. I understand, Michael, why the why the question is phrased mm-hmm. this way because you want to you want to put it in a vacuum, right? You want to right. say you want to build a narrative that says, "Uh huh, see, they held on to that offensive line unit too long last year." Mm-hmm. Right. Right. But it, it just, yeah, it just it's hard to it's hard to make that black and white comparison. But I, I get the I get the question. I I get the question, and I you know. Probably long story short here, uh, is this offensive line going to be a better run blocking unit than last year's was? I mean, it's a low bar to clear, right? So, uh, but is it okay to go back and say they should have dumped half those guys last year? Well, I mean, if you if you knew now, uh, what you know, if you knew back then, what you know knew now. I mean, it's easy to make decisions. I understand once again, Michael, that the the question. I just don't think it's properly framed, and I don't think you can look at things in a vacuum like that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm just going to focus on the job that these guys do this year because it is the key group, and there are still question marks, and I'm still really worried about Trey Turner and how that's going to go. I mean, I get why they signed him, but, man, I've not been really impressed by what I've seen so far. I took a lot of heat for kind of questioning, you know, the ability of him right after watching this tape. I, I hope it, I, I'll just say this. I hope Trey Turner gets better than what he's shown so far. You know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Chuck Griffin writes in Dave, thanks to the entire team on great camp coverage. Uh, if a team kicks a hypothetical 1 million into 2022, but never spends that 1 million, then do they get it back as a credit? Uh, the Steelers have kicked approximately $22 million pre-Showbert into 2022. Then let's say they finish the, the year $5 million under the cap with the five with the five million dollar credit shifting to 2022. Would that 22 dead money uh, in dead money be more like 17 million in dead money? I, I get where he's coming here. There doesn't seem to be any penalty for kicking the can down the road if you end up not using it. The bonus that you freed up to spend it on Melvin Ingram and maybe the backup free safety. Uh, I guess that's a good way of looking at it, Chuck, because look, it, the teams have the ability to roll over any left uh, leftover cap space, right? You know, right. so and and you can bet your bottom cap dollar. Huh, you mm. see, this, hey. see what I did there? Hey, nice uh, that they will roll over whatever is unused in 2021 to 2022. So you could you could theoretically look at this as just making this sure that they do the restructures. They get far enough up ahead of this thing that should they need it, they have it right. And then. Uh, you see where Chuck's coming from? I, I, I think he's got the right idea here. You, I mean, you, 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 you kick it ahead, but you're not all of it technically gets kicked ahead, I guess, is what he's trying to say. I guess I'm having a little trouble following, but this is more in, in your wheelhouse than it is mine. Right. I mean, if you restructure and you don't use all of it, then yeah, you roll it ahead. I, I guess that's, right. that, that, that. Right. So uh, any any unused cat money just gets rolled over. Right. Essentially, right? Is right. that fair to say? Okay. Right. There now, go. there are teams that choose not to roll over that cap money because they have, you know, X amount of it. But still, there's the whole cash versus cap 
over a four year span percentage that, that NFL teams have to spend. Ninety percent? They changed uh, that. Yeah, it's like eighty nine to ninety, something like that. I know yeah. that in the two thousand eleven CBA it was eighty nine. I forget what the number if the number's okay. gone up any uh right there. But that's what teams that you know, that's what the a lot of the collective bargaining about as well too. Teams want uh a large percent of the cap money to be put back into the players. They don't want teams skimping and not putting the putting the cash back into the players, if that makes right. sense. Yeah, I got you there. Uh let's see here. Uh if I got one more here, Christopher King. How secure is Cassius Marsh's spot on a fifty three man roster? Number forty four is making things happen, albeit against a bit lesser competition. Finally watched the Eagles game and Jones was getting good pressure for uh the second consecutive game. Can he do enough to unseat Marsh or is this comparable to the Tuzar Skipper infatuation from the fan base? I feel it's slightly different because because Jones does have special teams ability, unlike Skipper. Uh, this is where people run into the confirmation bias problem here. But as Alex and I said a little while ago there, there is the plausibility factor that Cassius Marsh might be on the outs. But we have to see a little bit more out of either Jameer, I think Roche's probably the better special teams player than Jameer Jones. I think Jameer Jones is a slightly better ready defensive player than, than, than Quincy Roche right now. But I think both of them need to show a little bit more in special teams. Now, if, 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 if Cassius Marsh comes, if, if you're rooting against Cassius Marsh, you don't want him to show up on any special teams tape making plays. Uh, uh, this week in Detroit. I think if Cassius Marks comes out there and makes a strong special team statement against Detroit, I think it's all over. Yeah. Um, arbitrarily, I'm going to give Marsh a 75% chance of making the team as we sit here today. So there's still a 25% chance he doesn't, which are, are decent odds if you're a big Roche or Jameer Jones fan. I think Roche has the next best odds to make it over Jameer Jones. But um, I think you know, where they sit right now, Marsh is going to be the guy. People are just waiting for that to, to, for Cassius Marsh not to happen so they can come back at us, Alex, and say, uh-huh, why you, why, why'd you guys have Cassius Marsh in your 53-man roster all that time? Uh, I think people just like Quincy Roche and just think he's going to make the roster or are concerned that he'll get claimed on waivers if you don't have him on the 53. All right. All right. Uh, I think we knocked out a bunch of these uh, here uh, overall. As far as I, we got a lot of, uh, boy, you're a popular guy when you put out calls for uh, people to uh, work for the site. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you to everyone. Um, we'll have some updates there, hopefully before Saturday's game. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go call. An exterminator because I'm getting a million centipedes in my house. And I was chasing one around the house at one o'clock last night in a yakety sax type of moment. So if anyone has any advice besides burning down my house, which I'm tempted to do to get rid of centipedes. Have you, have, have you not uh, gotten a pest control service yet? I haven't. Well, I just got the stupid bug spray that I thought was working for like a week. And yeah. then it, it, it has seemed to stop working. So now I'm going to have to call a guy who okay. hopefully has a flame flower, flamethrower because – Tired of these things. Yeah, good luck. Good luck with the uh, uh, centipedes there. So uh, let's see. Uh, Alex and I will be back later on this evening, right? Wrapping up uh, his final trip out to Heinz Field for training camp. Hopefully, uh, it's a long one and not cut short uh, by, uh, by 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 the weather there. So we will talk to everybody a little bit later on uh, on Wednesday evening. So in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Steeders Depot. Follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show the Terrible Podcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do and you want to donate to the cause, please go to steedersdepot.com. Hit the donate button up right navigational bar. Also, if you like an ad-free version of the site, please go to steedersdepot.com. Hit the ad-free button for $25 for one calendar year. You can have an ad-free uh, version of the site as well. Alex, great job. Always enjoy uh, talking this stuff with you. And, and once again, Man, thank you for sending me that tape. <laughs> You're very welcome. Merry Christmas. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and as always, thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Alex.